Hi everyone, I'm Rachel Daly and I play for Houston Dash and this is 30 Minutes with us. Hi everyone, I'm Millie Bright and I play for Chelsea. Um, right from the beginning, it was actually a mistake getting into football. Um, obviously, it was into horses, into football, uh, doing both. I think anything activity-wise, I, I was on board with. I literally went to watch my friend play and because I just couldn't sit on the sidelines. I just paid a pound and joined in. And literally from there, the manager came back, um, took the papers to my mum and dad. And then before you knew it, I was in a team. And yeah, just kind of progressed from there. And I think for me, it was not really even understanding football in the beginning. It was just being in a team environment, being around, you know, your friends and just, just playing and yeah, just having fun and it being a new challenge, I think. Me and Rach are pretty similar in terms of we're very competitive. So whether we're three, five or 12, we'll always want to win no matter what we're doing. Um, so for me, it was not being that great at football as a kid, uh, just having the energy to run around and wanting to be better. I hated losing um, right from day one. So, yeah, I think that's where I got my drive to be better at football. And, yeah, it just progressed from there. Uh, that was for my local team, Killamarsh Dynamos then went into the Sheffield United Academy. I think that's really where it stepped up for me. Um, you was logging your nutrition, you was logging your training, you know, what you did each day, um, how much food you had, like what you had, and then kind of get educated from there. Um, and same same routine with the gym. Um, got scouted for Doncaster, uh, went straight into the first team, um, semi-pro from there and, yeah, didn't really feature at all. Was a very young, raw player. Um, no experience. Was so far off technically. Went out on loan to Leeds. Rachel will be happy about that. Really? Um, <laughs> went there for a year when I was 18 and then returned to Doncaster. Um, and then I was a starter from there. Um, played every minute. Got a lot more experience. Loved the game. Wanted to be better. Um, got picked up by England then. Um, I was quite late on. Under 19s I joined. Um, I think from there just found the hunger for it really still for me even at that age the age of 18 20 not really knowing where football could go or you know if it actually could be a career for me I was literally just playing because I loved to play and I wanted to be better and I wanted to win um, but still planning my you know with the horses and, and that sort of career because for me even at that age like people say oh, when did you realize you'd be pro and I'm like literally when I signed my pro contract that is that is when I knew um so yeah it's probably Rachel's probably got a different story but yeah Chelsea came in didn't actually take the first offer just didn't feel ready um Doncaster had literally just been relegated so I had quite a lot of pride I didn't want to see like I was running away from a situation and running away from being relegated um we actually had to play a whole season knowing we were never going to stay up no matter where we came in the league um that's when Manchester City came in so they took our spot, but yeah, that was a, a real tough season and a bit of an eye opener to kind of who I am as a player and what drives me. And yeah, I just had a lot of loyalty to Doncaster. But after that year, um, when we got relegated, stayed, and then fortunately Chelsea came in again. And that time, yeah, I just I just knew straight away you you have you have a gut feeling, and that gut feeling is is normally right. Um, and that time, I just yeah, I signed. I said yes before I'd even spoke to anyone, like my mom and my dad. I was like, oh, I'm, I'm signing for Chelsea, like I've, I've done. Uh, I think it was a massive shock. I don't think anyone expected it, um, really. Quite quite a slow developer in terms of football and, yeah, getting into England, etc. cetera. Um, but, yeah, it was a, a tough journey, but got there in the end. So, yeah, I think I knew I'd be pro when I literally signed on the dotted line. So... I think a bit of a similar story to Mill as a, as a kid, but I think I've always played um, growing up. My brother played, my dad played. So I've always had a ball at my feet. But um, again, like Mill, no one knows where your journey is going to go. You think you want to be a professional footballer, but yeah, at that age, it's it's unrealistic. You're not making money. You're paying to play. You're not getting paid to play. And, you know, it's so far-fetched to think that you're ever going to make a living out of playing football. So I think obviously a lot of girls back when we were younger, probably Millie knows a lot. Um, of friends and stuff that just gave up because didn't see a future and didn't see a, a women's football progressing or anything like that. Um, but yeah, I played for a small local team called Kilnall Nomads. Um, quite similar to your name, actually, Mill. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
I played for the boys team and then um, when I couldn't play for the boys team anymore, moved, we actually created a girls team. Um, so we could play after the age of 12. So obviously we weren't allowed to play with the boys after 12. Um, and then, yeah, same with Mill. I went on to Leeds Academy then. So I was with their academy the whole way through. And that's obviously where it gets serious. You get reports and things like that. And you get graded and assessed at the end of each season and what you need to work on and, you know, things like that. So it starts to become a little bit more serious and you start to think, OK, this is something that I want to do. Um, I played at Leeds right the way through to the first team. Um, obviously, Childhood Club, my team that I support, it was the dream, really. And then we folded um, and a bunch of us moved to sign for Lincoln. So I was at Lincoln for two years. And um, like me, yeah, I was obviously with the England youth teams and it got to that point where I felt like I was, my career was a bit stagnant. I didn't know where it was going. I didn't have a direction. I didn't have a purpose. I didn't really see myself developing any further than being at Lincoln. And that was something that kind of scared me. I didn't want to stand still. I didn't want to just fit in. I didn't want to just get by on my daily life and hope for the best. I always strive for more like Mill. I hate losing. I hate the you know, the fear of failure. Um, so I wanted to further my career. Again, like Mill had a backup with the horses and stuff like that. I, I knew that I needed to do something aside of football and that's where I went around the education route. Um, I went to university in America. Um, a lot of people at the time doubted me for going. You know, they were like, don't go. You're playing professional football here. Why would you go? What if you can't come back and play? And what if it doesn't work out? And I thought, what if it doesn't, you know, I've got to take that chance and it's risk versus reward. And I think the reward was a lot higher than the risk. And yeah, to, I, same as Mill, I didn't tell anyone. I just thought I'm going, make the decision to go. Obviously startled a lot of people and then ups and downs during that time between signing to go there and going. I was questioning it more and more whether I should go, whether I shouldn't go. Um, but yeah, it was the best thing I ever did. I think I went to St. John's University in, in New York, um, probably one of the best four years of my life. And I'm not the most academic, so it was actually really helpful for me to go and learn how to study again. Um, and then, yeah, then I got signed for, in the draft, in the NWSL draft by Houston Dash, and I've been there ever since. When we were younger, there was, like I said, we paid to play. We weren't mm -hmm. paid to play. We had to pay subs and sign up yeah. fees <laughs> and buy your own kit and you take your own lunch and, you know, you, you didn't, I, I remember mum and dad having to work extra hours to get me to places and find a way to get a lift to training because they were working and getting new boots, one pair of new boots a season was breaking the bank. It was a disaster. I was, I was like, how, is it, how am I ever going to pay my family back? Um, and I think now you obviously develop on now and you think you look at kids that are 16, 17 and, you know, they're blooming driving Audis and Mercedes and getting paid big free contracts boots. and for gloves and just rolling around in all the latest gear and things like that. Whereas I think we were just well wearing hand-me-downs and our shirts with like Got holes thin in his lines. boots. <laughs> Toes are hanging out. So it's definitely progressive. <laughs> yeah, I think it will keep progressing. I think it's it's hard work though. Like the women's game is hard. Like we have to grow the game. Like that's that's a duty that we have. Every female footballer has that responsibility if they want to be pro and they want it to improve I think what you do now is not for yourself it's for the next generation and that's how you have to look at it if you want women's football to be successful so we have to keep changing the game we have to keep breaking barriers we have to keep being successful and I think at the minute you know there's so many people that want to get involved in women's football or even just support it even if they don't want to participate it's just lifting the awareness of it and I think the achievements that have been made over the past three, four years have been outstanding, but they don't just happen. Like we have to make that happen. So as long as that work keeps being put in, then yeah, I see it continuing to grow. And like we were saying that we were joking around then when we were little, but it weren't a possibility to be a pro. Like you only knew when it happened. Whereas now these kids growing up and like, I'm going to be a pro and they can say that. And it's not like a 50, 50, like if you work hard, um, and you put yourself in the right position, then you probably are going to end up being a pro. So, yeah, it's a completely different world now, um, and kids can look up and and do that. But yeah, the opportunities that they have at sixteen compared to what we have, it's it's yeah, it's kind of mind blowing really when you look back. And like you said, people are getting sponsorship deals, and yeah, they're pretty much full time. Whereas we were working three jobs and trying to do training wherever you could whether it's running up and down your road or god knows what it was but yeah it's it's just everything's gone up another level really and it has to keep going in that direction i 
Honestly, I get asked this question a lot and I think it, it's hard to compare because I think, you know, you look at America as a, as a nation and the way that they play and, you know, they're the best in the world for a reason. Um, and everyone aspires to be like the US. Everyone wants to play like the US. Everyone wants to beat the US. And I think that that's, they've built their... They've built their fortress, and I think that's obviously what everyone else wants to break down, everyone wants to be a part of. But, you know, I think the difference in the styles of play, I think in England, I think that most people are a little bit more technical. Um, I think because we've done this from a young age, like we've been talking about now, I think we've been playing since we can remember, and it's all we've ever done. And for the most part, most of the England girls and most girls in this league just play football. We didn't play other sports growing up in, in America, you know, there's people on my team that had a choice to make, big choices to make when they were 16, 17. Do they go and pursue basketball? Do they go pursue football? Do they go pursue track and field? And they have the ability to do all three of those things at the highest level. And I think that just shapes them into an athlete and they have to pick a sport. So whereas maybe they're not as technically gifted because that's not been their sole focus, they, they can run longer, they can run faster. They have hand-eye coordination. They have awareness. Things that we probably don't really necessarily look at because all we do is focus on football. So I think the game in America is a lot... Uh, you probably think it'd be a little bit more transitional. There's, there's a lot more going on. Uh, but it's definitely a very different style. And I think you see that when, you know, the International Cup, when, like, Man City play against North Carolina, I think you see the different styles and how how hard it is to break down both styles from both ends. But it's been a really good experience coming back and seeing the league and, and seeing how this league has developed. Because obviously last time I played in it, it was nowhere near this level. And like we have just touched on then, I think, you know, going into the game, I think we need to look at it as we want to leave the leave the game a better place than where we found it. And we were fortunate enough to, you know, although we did have to pay and things like that, and it was difficult for us as kids, the people before us, the likes of, you know, Casey Stoney, Kelly Smith, people like that, they didn't even have that. Um, yeah. And they've left the game to us in an unbelievable an unbelievable place and we just keep keep on growing the game and leaving it better and better as we keep going so I think it's good to come back and see how much it's developed from the foundations that were laid when the league first started yeah I think it's it's pressure I think that that comes with leadership anyway but I think personally I've I've always found myself in like a leadership role, whether you're named captain or not, that just comes out of me, like the leadership, the communication. I just want to help people. I want my teammates to do well. I'm not afraid to to say what needs to be said, I guess. Um, and I've always tried to lead by example um, in the sense that actions do speak louder than words. So I'll train at 100 percent. I'm always switched on. Um, not late, etc. So it's not even things on the pitch, it's off the pitch. But yeah, I think that really that experience helped me because it was a, a step up. You know, it's national level. There's more pressure. There's 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 more eyes on you, um, and everyone's kind of expecting you to do well. Um, but yeah, I, I didn't really, even though there's pressure there, you don't really. I don't really feel it. I just use it like to the best of my ability. Um, yeah, I think as long as you stay true to yourself, I've always said that. Then you, you can't give any more um, than what you are. I never try and be something that I'm not. But yeah, I think with each of the age groups, I mean, Rach, you were at a younger age group than me, weren't you? I came yeah, in the 19th. Yeah, I started at 15s. Yeah, so I don't know what the 15s were like. Um, but when I came in at the 19s, obviously for me, it was a massive shock. Like, it was a complete different world. I'm coming from, well, I first got picked up when I was on my loan at Leeds. So yeah, coming from training twice a week, traveling to games, and then you go on camp and that's my first experience. You get your kit. You're training every day, you're playing games, the meetings, the detail. Um, yeah, it was just kind of like an eye opener and then you get a bit of a taste for it and then you, you kind of want more. Then I obviously moved up to 23s. And again, it's just every step up, it's more professional. There's there's more pressure. You're expected to do more, like more is expected of you every day. Um, and I think not even on the pitch, but off the pitch, like tactically, you're more aware of, like the game and kind of what's in front of you, different formations, national level, the, the level was a lot higher. I mean, Rachel, you can probably vouch for that. The quality was, yeah, I was like, oh crap, I need to, I need to get to work. Like <laughs> I've got a hell of a lot of work to do. Um, but then I think making the move to Chelsea that I'm training every single day with world-class players. So I felt like a massive step up in, in my game after the first year. And it's hard. Don't get me wrong. You, you get to times when you question yourself and I'm like, oh, can I do this? Like, am I ever going to get there? Um, yeah, so it is hard, but I mean, I think you have to be in those sorts of environments to develop. 
you have to be. I don't think if I had have been and took that decision, um, I think my career would have looked a lot different for sure. <laughs> Belgium away, me and Rachel on the bench. And I think this is when we, this is really probably when we were like, started being dumb and dumber, really. Yeah. Um, and we was on the bench together. And obviously I'm a defender. I played midfield defence. Like I, I was back and forth. Um, I played striker as a kid, but I, I, I think at England, I'd, under 19s, I played up front with Mo. And then I kind of drifted to midfield, stayed in midfield for the 23s. And then, it was not till I started going in with the seniors that I went defence, but I'd literally not played there at all. Um, and then came to the um, came to the debut day, and what was like, go get warm. So me and Rachel then getting warm, and I was like, oh my god, this is like my my debut. Uh, and then we both went on up top together, and I just think it's so iconic. Like that would never happen ever. Like. Literally, yeah, same scared. position, same time going on the pitch. Um, and I remember, I think we nearly, I think you were, I remember I was in the nine, you was like in the 10, you drove in. I think you took a shot, but I was in the box. I was like, oh my God, imagine if she assists me here and like we, we score, that would be so sick. But yeah, so crazy. We actually made our, I mean, my debut with Rach um, and came on up top. So yeah, front pairing. I'd already made the transition then to centre back, so I was but like, "We had no idea either." We were like, "Well, I wonder where we're going on. Like, what changes are you going to make?" And he said, yeah. to the two people that were coming off, and we were like, "It's yeah, like we're going the nine. I was like, "All right, we'll see." Like, well, like my old school. Both on up front, we were like, "We looked at each other and just burst out laughing." <laughs> I think that actually helped though. You coming on with me because everyone's like, "Oh my god!" Like tapping me on the bench. And I'm like, "Relax. Like, it's fine. Like, don't. <laughs> you need to just relax a little bit and let me get on the pitch." Um, but yeah, I think having Rachel and us going on together, it, it helped me. Like, I think I was just giggling the whole time. I just kept looking across the Rachel and I'm laughing, and then I'm like, keep straight page, you're making your debut, all eyes on you. So, <laughs> obviously, we're best friends, and you know, it, I, I think with us, it's more of a it's, it's more than a best friendship, it's like a partnership. We're just like partners in crime, like, we do everything together, like, yeah. We're just like the same person, but so different. We're just sort of like molded into one. That's the only way I can describe it. It's like even from the start, though, we didn't. You know, like some people try and make a friendship, like they try and become. We didn't try, like we didn't have a choice, really. We're just like, we're just, we're just it drawn. It just together. happened, and everyone was like, everyone knew when it happened. They were like, "This is a bad. This is a bad thing. It's a bad idea." Literally, if we're on issues. camp, if we're on camp and Millie's not there or something, everyone's like, "Are you okay?" <laughs> I'm like. <laughs> she isn't my left leg but no I'm not okay uh, but I think you know like yeah so we've always roomed together we've always you know on away trips and things like that we've always been together and I think we're obviously in a really intense environment every day um club and for country um and there's sometimes when you just it's too much and I think the pressures and the demands of you are so high that you don't actually know how to deal with it sometimes and you have to put on a brave face and you know we are these big loud bubbly positive kind of people so when we do have a down date it's very noticeable and um we just always said that it's, it's such a shame that people suffer and people don't speak up and people don't have that outlet and people don't have help and support and it might be you know one instagram post that we can post to make someone feel better and you know we have got a duty of care really as, as as professional athletes i think we've we've got a platform now we've built our platform up over the years to help and to you know actually use that to help other people rather than just post a picture of you playing football it's how can we help and we wanted to do that together and i think obviously our names are quite good for that as well with daily and bright so i think we kind of just it was the wembley camp um november of 2019 we just sat down we looked at each other one day we had a day off and we we're just like I was doodling in the book. I think yeah, I was doodling like, and I was like drawing a shape and I was like, oh my God, this could be our logo. And then our brains just work at like 100 miles per hour. So we got paper, pens, pencil cases. Yeah, we, all different colour pens. We got a last little glitter book. It was like, right, it's the DB book. But I think we had a lot of messages as well. Like we want to see, we started doing handshakes um, and then everyone started saying, oh, we want, a, we want a new handshake. We kept making new ones up. On camps, we used to just set music and do dance videos, and we're terrible dancers, but we just find it hilarious. And obviously, we're not everyone's cup of tea, but we are who we are. And I think 
a value that me and Rach like to set ourselves has always been real. I, I don't want to, we don't want to be fake. We don't want to come across like everything's fine and we're always all right. And I think it's, it's learning that it's, it's all right not to be all right. And we don't want, especially daily brightness. It's, it's very raw. It, it is what it is. What you see is what you get. Um, we don't post anything that we don't truly believe in. And we just we just want to show people that we are real people alongside being in this you know professional world and everyone looking up to you and you kind of still on the stage and everyone's looking at you. We do want to show that we are just people and we can do normal things. And yeah, we are crazy and that's we're never going to change. But we started doing handshakes and people started putting requests in. I think that's really how we started to get like our engagement with our fans um and then asking for more and we'd always do it at the end of games and we'd be like right right let's do it let's do it and then someone would always get it on video so we'd always post it and then people thought, oh you should do this and they started giving us ideas and then yeah we was on that camp and I was just doodling and then I came up with the logo and then was like oh my god yeah we can do this and then from there it just just grew really didn't it right yeah something happened where one day someone, we were like we just walked downstairs and we felt like the mood was a little bit off we were like it's your daily dose of brightness and then <laughs> we were like wait that's a good name like we could use yeah, that it did. Yeah. and then it was just generated from there but it's like millie said i think you know we're we want people to feel comfortable and we want people to feel better and you know we like to live and breathe our values as humans and if you know we can we'll always be true to ourselves Millie says that a lot mm -hmm. it's something that I think we we always are we're never different we you know if it's time to be quiet we're still going to be loud and I think that you know to show that um and and use that on our platform and just epitomize what we are um I think it does help other people and if, if we can give back one percent of what how happy and how bubbly we can be to help other people then that's something that we've always wanted to do and I think that obviously now it's taken off and it's it's you know it's almost a business now and you know it's something that we we want to build the foundation of and make it to be something a lot bigger in the future we've already done some big things already haven't we like the, the charity work that we've done um we did act your age that was children in need uh, we did that we did the hit against hit campaign uh for domestic abuse um and like i said it's things that we really do believe in and we don't just do it for the sake of doing it we do it because we want to make a change and we've always said we want to give back like we've like Rachel we've had so much in football we've been given so much and I do think footballers can give back more like as people that like we can do more we have the platform we have the contacts we have everything in our power to make a difference and I, I think a lot of people do don't get me wrong but I still think we can do more and that's something me and Rachel you know working hard on moving forward is yeah we've, we've done some incredible work already that some people might not even know of but yeah moving forward we want daily brightness to be known as um yeah like a business and something that can make change and the messages that we've received are just like literally changing people's days and if it's people that struggle with depression or mental health and they're stuck at home and like you've literally just made me laugh and that could be from us just acting goonies like well that's what we are like we are silly, but at the same time, when it's time to get the smart head on, like we do switch on, we're not just, we're not complete idiots. Um, although we may look at it in our dance videos. But yeah, we're obviously just setting up the Daily Brightness uh, merch, the DB merch, which will be out soon. So we said we wanted people to, well, we had a lot of requests, didn't we, Rach? People like, oh, you should bring out hoodies. We did the, um, when we did the Hit Against Hits, we did the uh, baking challenge and we had aprons. But this time, obviously, it was locked down. We couldn't get any prints done. So we had to just draw it on ourselves. I mean, we're no artists. Um, but then everyone was like, oh, my God, we want, a, we want a DB apron. We want an apron. So from there, we actually sat down. It was like, we could actually really like do something here. So we said, we made the chat, um, made the decision. And we said, yeah, we're going to do the DB merch. So we did that. So that is so, so close to launching. Um, we just got to make sure everything's, you know, in place for that. But we wanted like our fans of of the db and and ourselves to to feel like they don't have to be alone so if they put on a db hoodie you know you might not be able to pick up the phone and call them or send them a message but they can wear it with pride and if it gives them confidence or it makes them feel positive whatever it it does we just want to yeah help people i guess and we've both been through our struggles ourselves i think we're lucky to room on on camp because without rach i don't think i'd have got through certain days and vice versa we've we just understand how to help each other and yeah seeing each other at our worst I guess and 
it's a powerful thing when you start reflecting and understanding what other people go through and people look at us like Rach said we're expected to always be bubbly and always be loud and always bring the personality but some days we just we've got our poker face on and nobody even knows and that's the scary thing um so yeah we're just wanting to to really kick start everything now and make a change it was quite random how it came out really but obviously we have the same agent which is nice um shout out to sue because she's doing david because they're the best Susie cakes and um, david but yeah, so she contacted um, a, a, a nice guy called uh, Ashley Walbridge. He's a DJ kind of producer. Um, reached out to Sue and, and figured out what we were doing, and you know, found a I think just found a common ground with us. And you know, he's he's had struggles himself, and yeah, I think he wanted to come up with a new song, um, a producer song for mental health um, to raise awareness for the mental health charity called Ditch the Label. Um, so we actually are part of a song um a dance hit called as it rains um that's soon to be released and obviously we're really excited about that uh, i won't go into too much detail about that um but i think yeah that's something that's really exciting and it's things like this that you know i think will take off make us take off and, and really put us out there because ultimately we're not doing this to we're not doing this to be a hugely successful business that's generating loads of income we're doing this for feel good for, to help people to help ourselves, you know, and, and, and just have something that we can do to give back. Um, like Millie said, using the platforms and things like that. So this song is, is a good song and hopefully everyone listens to it after they watch this. And, um, we both really like dance music. So, you know, it kind of fit in with us perfect. And, you know, I think Ashley's got a great balance of, um, making things good for other people as well like us and obviously his is he's a producer and a dj and i think it's something that we love music and wanted to be a part of but that's obviously the next big focus for us that we've got going on yeah. in the, with the merchandise getting the song out i think he believes in us as well um i think when ash saw our page it was literally like it's still a growing page it's still something that we need to get out there um so for him to see that and just see the work we've done so far and and believe in that and want us to be a part of the song that's like for us that's massive um not just being a part of the song but having someone like ash believing us and kind of understanding what we're about and what we're trying to trying to do and now he's on board in helping that that's like a massive success for us and yeah hopefully people can can see that but ash's story is is pretty special too so yeah it feels a bit of an honor to be on board with him really and be a part of the same thing what brings us together is music um i don't know anyone that doesn't like music especially dance so yeah we uh, can't wait to be grooving to this one and yeah we might even bring out a little dance video for it <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think just follow your heart. I think that's really important. Obviously, when I went to America, everyone was telling me, no, don't go, don't go. But I think I followed my heart and followed my gut and what that was telling me. And, you know, I worked so hard every single day. I still do. I still live those values. And and I think, you know, there's only, there's going to be so many people and so many challenges and so many obstacles in your way. But if, if, you, if your heart's in the right place and you work hard and, you know, your passion's there, then, you know, no one can get in the way of that. I think pretty similar to Rach, it's just, reach out get any support you can but I think if you look at all the successful athletes no matter what sport it's the ones that go above and beyond it's the ones that go training whilst the rest are sat at home it's the ones that sacrifice special moments whether that's family we have to make so many sacrifices but when you look back and you've got the medals to say you've won and and the experiences that you've gone through and the memories that you've made it's it's all worthwhile so go above and beyond um in whatever you know sport you're kind of taking part in and reach out to people that can give you advice and yeah just live with no regrets oh, well hopefully Rachel will be in the same country as me that is that is on my bucket list to get her in the same country um now it would be amazing obviously it's hard when she's in America so yeah I definitely would like to be playing football in the same country um maybe she could even be same team who knows um I think main thing in football is to keep being successful um stay true to ourselves 
and to really kickstart daily brightness and you know people know daily brightness is making change whether it's charity work um especially the merch coming out and yeah just being able to look back and say we've made a difference in several different areas whatever they might be so that's that's for my aims yeah i think millie like millie said like it would be unbelievable to play on the same team i don't think it'd be unbelievable for everyone else on the team but <laughs> we would definitely have a blast um, but yeah, I think obviously just pushing on with our England careers and club careers and just being as successful as we can be, whatever that looks like. Um, you know, we're, we're very, very, very hardworking people on and off the pitch. And I think, you know, that's that shows every time we play um, and even the work we're doing off the field. So I think, yeah, just honestly, just giving our all and, and being as successful as we possibly can be. Um, and yeah, I think for us, I think we're as people we want to be looked at as people as well as footballers and you know when you look back when you've retired and hopefully that's many moons away but when we retire that people will look back and look at Rachel and Millie and think you know what they were really good people they helped other people they you know laid the foundations for other people in terms of football and off the field and health mental health anything that it, it, you can think of and I think we want to be looked at as good people as well as good footballers. Thank you for watching everyone go and follow Daily Brightness over on Instagram. What Millie said, thank you for watching.